So, uh, my name is Michel St. Pierre, and I'm the director of planning and design for Gensler. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity to just talk about uh, some of the approaches that we've developed uh, uh, over the last few years as to how we deal with this major issue that we're dealing today, uh, and how this has affected the way we work, uh, and how we have tried to develop some of these ideas through it. So, obviously, you know, there's something here. Uh, you know, that climate change and population growth are the biggest challenge that we're facing. Uh, it has a major impact on the way that our cities are going. Uh, uh, the Earth Summit like in Rio, like in 19, uh, like 92, uh, I, well, I like the fact that North America and Europe basically uh, was responsible for 85% of the carbon dioxide produced in the planet. So obviously we, uh, North American, are by any way can be like, like a model, the like customer way India or like China or other countries really need to develop. Like I think that new models, new thinking needs to take place to address these issues. Uh, and, uh, and one of the big issues like with climate change is that it, it creates obviously a climate uh, volatility that really will affect, in fact, uh, uh, like poverty greatly like around the world, as it will really impact the cost of food. So one thing that I thought was very interesting in, is when we do work, you know, like, you know, like in other countries, is the way we do work really needs to address these issues, like food security, power security, water security, are critical elements. And whenever we do work, like in cities, we always try to have some kind of a view as to the bio region like of a city, um, and how these elements can be taken care of, uh, because it's very critical. Uh, again, you know, one thing that that I'm very passionate about like, is cities and is city making and how we you know, can make our cities more livable and more sustainable. Uh, today, over half the world population lives in cities. Uh, it's predicted by 2015, which is around the corner, that we'll have around 22 mega cities of over 10 million people, such as New York City here in the US. And by 2050, uh, three quarters of the world population will live like, in cities. So cities, obviously, and they're you know, and the way that they are impacted by climate change is a critical concern to all of us. Uh, so, so one of the issues that we are trying to, to bring into our work is how uh, there are critical issues to make cities more sustainable and to be able to mitigate the climate change. And in a way, I think that I'm using the term adapt as much as to our cities need to adapt to climate change and as much as the way that we as professionals need to adapt to what this new challenge is. So we have to change the way we work basically to really bring a lot more uh, expertise into the work, like to the way that we practice. Uh, but basically there's four critical issues that I think uh, are uh, very important as uh, so we can create like, sustainable like, cities. Uh, like transit is like, critical to reduce greenhouse like, gas production to really promote transit uh, uh, and density uh, you know, so that we really build around you know, like a public transportation like kind of system that hopefully will reduce sprawl. Sprawl, the way we see it like in the United States is really our suburban areas that develop you know, with, with this very low density, but sprawl around the world means many things. Like sprawl like in Bombay, for instance, or in Shanghai, really means that the cities which are growing very fast at an incredible rate uh, uh, are in fact in a major example of sprawl. Like in the sense that it's a very different look of sprawl because it's very high density, but but it's a single-use growth towards you know, you know that goes out to the center of the, like of the city and at the old model like of the monocentric city to you know like where everybody comes to one place to work and then commute back to where they live is very much the same way that is happening here as it's happening in India. But it looks very different. So the idea of sprawl is something that we need, that one needs to tackle uh, uh, yeah, very strongly. Uh, open space uh, that obviously like includes like livable street, but also the like the idea like of maintaining and rec and kind of recreating like wetland, just as we will discuss, like the way to to make sure that the cities like are sustainable and adapt, you know, like to the sea level rising. And very importantly, to make this you know like the city stable, you know, from a social aspects so that we have a balance of jobs and housing for all. Uh, so, well again, you know, like, like we look like at California, which, which you know, like in many respects, like, 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 like has been like a leader to really 
tackle some complex issues. And in the Bay Area, we have all these different agencies, and I'm sure I can kind of, you know, kind of forgetting many of them, who are really kind of tackling this major issue like of climate change. And, and even like at the, you know, like nationwide, uh, and the EPA is trying hard uh, to really, uh, you know, pass you know, some major new uh, 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 legislation that really uh, tackle, you know, like greenhouse gas emission, which are, <coughs> you know, like the cause of this. And in the Bay Area, again, like as Will, um, you know, and others have discussed, is that, you know, there's these basic kind of levers like strategies that we are looking at to really adapt, like, you know, like to the sea level rising and to climate change and so on. Uh, which we probably can discuss, and plus we can learn a lot from, you know, from our Dutch friends as to how to really, you know, come up with some very creative like solution to really try to, you know, like deal with these issues. But, but you know, uh, like myself and all my colleagues, like you know, as architects and urban planners and urban designers, uh, really what we are promoting is to really some sound planning principles that that really can have a major impact on our footprint, both the ecological, water, and carbon footprint. Uh, and again, you know, like the idea that we really want to go away from a car-centric versus a low-carbon lifestyle, which again, this is applicable to, you know, like North America, like, uh, as we see like on the left here. But, the, but, but I could have some similar images of China, which would be all high-rise, but all residential high-rise, you know, like in a faraway distance, that are either served by transit, some, you know, but also by cars. Most of these countries are embracing our lifestyle, which is buying cars and and driving to their home and so on, and so so the mess that we've created worldwide, you know, with, you know, uh, is embraced by many around the world. So basically, the way we have to become is to become really, uh, you know, we have to adapt to these changes in the way we do work, both here and abroad, and really promote the idea of uh, of an approach that really reduce a what our what our footprint. So I was going to show three. Recent projects that we've uh, like completed, like against like in the last year, basically, uh, and some is a new community, like in China, like in Tianjin, like near Beijing, which was the first phase of an eco city, and and what I'll do is to go very briefly to let to let to this project because, like as you may guess, since we're very passionate about the work we do, and and I could be talking for hours about each one of these projects, so I go through very quickly to some of the major elements, uh, uh, let, like this project. So one is a new community. One is how we revitalize an urban district like in Shanghai, and how we really try to bring you know like these principles to apply to like a very you know like in a city. And now there's a project that we're currently working on uh, like in Stockton here, and it's uh, it's an extension like a city like a Stockton as a, what we call like a new eco district that really tries to address some of these issues in a, in like a very like uh, like global way. Uh, and so the project like in uh, Tianjin was the first phase of an eco city and, and the original like, master plan was for this very large, uh, I don't know, it was probably like two, like, you know, probably 500 hectare site or probably even like more so, but then this was designed for the first phase, which was a 40 hectare site. And the way we looked at it was to say, well, let's look at this, uh, you, know, you know, to really fully embrace like the principles of, of like small is beautiful, you know, which was, you know, you know, one of the first uh, writing, you know, like in the series about the ecological movement. So, like, I think it's interesting to really say.